What's up guys, Josh with Driver Motorsports here. So behind me we have this beautiful example of a BNR32. So that's the R32 Skyline GTR. This one is complemented with some pretty nice uh, goodies on it. Uh, got a lot going on in suspension, a lot of Nismo parts, got some 10 coilovers, uh, as well as these beautiful R34 wheels. So if you know, you know. Uh, this is the 2.6 liter variety, so not stroked or anything crazy like that. Uh, fitted with a precision turbo uh, and lots of other bits as far as the radium fuel rail, the radium fuel regulator, as well as the Haltec flex fuel sensor. And this thing is running the Haltec Platinum Pro ECU. Uh, so as you can see, we're on our dyno jet you know, ready to uh, take a look at this car to see what she's making power wise. And it's pretty important that before you ever get your car on a dyno, you do some basic setup, checking, and ensure that everything is uh, ready to rock and roll so you don't have, you know, one, a failure, but two, a nasty mess to clean up uh, once, uh, once done. So what we're gonna be doing today is taking a look at this car, making sure that the compression numbers look good. Uh, I've already run the car up to operating temperature. So again, these are gonna be warm numbers. Um, I probably could have gone a little further ahead and taken some of these plates and stuff off of here just to ease my uh, my timeline. But nonetheless, you get to watch in time lapse as I take this thing down apart and uh, prepare for doing these compression tests. So in a second, I'll talk about the gear that's going to be required and what else is needed to uh, do a compression test, essentially on any internal combustion type engine. Uh, but specifically, we're talking about the RB26 DET in this particular case. Stay tuned. All right guys, so basically we got the car set up and as I was talking about before, getting ready to do this compression test, uh, you're gonna need some basic things. So first of all, safety and awareness is like the number one and two or lumped together as the number one most important thing. Uh, remember, we ran this thing up to temperature uh, in order to get warm compression numbers. Uh, that's gonna give the engine time to you know, let those metals expand and give us the best possible chance for sealing and give us a good reading so that we know how healthy this engine is. So with that, the engine's gonna be hot. There's gonna be things that you probably shouldn't touch, you know, hot side of the turbo, exhaust pieces and such. So be mindful, wear gloves, uh, don't want to risk any unnecessary injuries to yourself or to your vehicle uh, by way of not paying attention to what's around. So I use that time now as, you know, the ability to get a good look around the engine bay, look for any other hazards, whether that be loose wires to the battery, uh, loose fittings, oil lines, fuel lines, etc., to make sure that you know, hey, if there's an issue, I want to address that now before we have this thing on full tilt, uh, trying to make some power on the dyno. So, you know, again, safety, a little bit of awareness, take a look at your surroundings and make sure everything's good to go. So with that, you're going to need some basic hand tools. So for example, you know, a, a standard socket set. And when I say standard, I don't mean like SAE standard. I'm just saying like basics. Um, in this instance, everything's metric. So, um, you know, getting you a metric socket set that has a, a a good range of sizes, whether they be shallows and deeps. Um, a really nice, you know, spark plug socket will help when it comes time to take those out. Um, you know, again, basic hand tools. So the one special tool that we'll be using today will be our compression gauge. Uh, this test gauge is something that can be uh, purchased at a lot of different auto parts stores. If you don't want to buy one, you can typically go to your local auto parts store and rent one. Um, however, I mean, again, they're they're relatively available and pretty affordable for that matter. Um, this one is a Moroso brand, uh, really nice piece. Um, you know, we use it quite heavily here. Um, if need be, again, you can, uh, you can order them from, you know, your, your reputable shop, somebody that uh, you trust, whether that be, you know, Summit Racing or, you know, who knows what, just again, take a look, find which one you want and go for it. So, with that, we talked about safety, we talked about the basic tools that are required. I'm getting ready to uh, start pulling things apart, switching over to that time lapse so you can, you know, not waste time watching me fumble with all these little nuts, bolts, washers, and screws and such. Okay, so last thing I wanted to talk about before I get started in this, and that is the proper way to do a compression test. So I've scoured the internet, I've looked at all the different things, I've read books, I've been through formal training courses like 
I myself think I've found at least three to five different ways that you could do a compression test and each one of those ways would claim to be the proper. So comment below what you think is the proper method and I'm going to tell you the one that I'm getting ready to do. Uh, so again, if you agree, let me know. If you disagree, let me know. So in essence, you know, all the different methods would be whether the engine is cold, whether the engine is hot, are all of the spark plugs removed? Is it only the spark plug that is removed from the cylinder that you're testing? Is it at wide open throttle? Is it at closed throttle? What is it? Like, so um, again, there's so many different facets. There's so many different conversations. There's so many different ways that people will tell you is the right way to do a compression test. So if you're ever in doubt, look at your factory service manuals, talk to your service technicians that worked for the manufacturers that, that built and, and uh, you know, service these cars and uh, you'll probably find the answer that you're looking for. So in this instance, I'm going to be removing all six plugs. Again, engine is up to operating temperature, so it's gonna be warm. And with all six plugs removed during my cranking with you know, my gauge installed, I'm going to be at wide open throttle and rotate the engine over you know, a handful of times until I believe that I've got the compression numbers that I'm looking for, or at least it's gonna get as high as it will allow for. And I'm gonna to try to repeat that process through all six cylinders, uh, letting them the same number of rotations over to make sure that, you know, one, I have repeatable results, and two, you know, I'm able to go back and check my work because it's done the same way every single time. Comment below if you think I'm right, if you think I'm wrong, what would you do? guys so while I was breaking that stuff down I was again doing more visual checks found a couple of things um, that had kind of fallen down in the valley nothing too big a deal uh, it wasn't causing any issues but again stuff floating around in there that shouldn't have been um, basically just removed that stuff put it over to the side and um, you know we'll talk about things like that so this is a car that we ourselves here at driver motorsports didn't build uh, it came in for a consignment sale and again we're doing an overall health check to make sure that hey this thing's ready to rock and roll so that you know its next happy owner is just that happy so um, any little issues and stuff like that that we see we go ahead and take care of them and make sure that uh, it's in top shape as best we can based on the information that's given to us and what we can clearly see with our own eyes so with that, we talked about the tools required, we talked about the gauge. Uh, so one of the things that you kind of didn't see me do on camera is I went into the Haltech software and I disabled the fuel injectors. Uh, so that way, while I'm cranking on this thing, it's not applying fuel to those cylinders. One, I don't want to be dumping a bunch of fuel in there and risk of flooding it out, washing out cylinders, just you name it. I don't want to make anything dumb happen. So um, if you don't have a standalone ECU where you have the ability to basically electronically turn those injectors off, simple solution would be unplug your cam angle sensor on the front of your RB series engine. Uh, and that's essentially just going to completely remove the signal to fire your igniter or pop each spark plug and fire that injector uh, as it moves through its rotating sequence. So that way we're not putting unnecessary strain on our injection system or ignition system. Life goes on, test accomplished. So uh, I'm gonna throw this in cylinder number one. Even though I have the injectors disabled, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the CAS. Uh, that's cam angle sensor for that slang term that I just threw in there. Uh, follow along and I'll show you how these numbers look as we go. All right, so CAS disconnected. Fuel injectors are turned off inside the ECU. Uh, I'm connected into cylinder number one. As I stated, the way I'm gonna do this, this is warm, and I'm gonna go wide open throttle, and every plug has been removed. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so it's gonna be tough for you to be able to kind of see what uh, that is because basically if I unthread it and or push this button it's going to relieve the pressure um, but again all six spark plugs removed engine at operating temperature 
wide open throttle. Cylinder one read 175 PSI, signifying that's a very healthy cylinder. So I wrote that down. That way I can bleed my pressure and move on to number two, three, four, five, and six. So I'll repeat that process and uh, report the numbers as I go. All right, let's do number two. All right, number two is also 175 PSI. Just kind of while I'm going through this stuff, there's a couple different tests that you can do um, when you have the engine kind of broke down to this position. You could do the compression test as we're doing now, or you could do like a cylinder leak down test. Um, that is a different test set that's required. Um, it's a little more, you know, complicated by way of, you know, valves and pressures and needing external shop air to, to make that work. Um, but that one will give you the ability to test your, uh, your leakage by way of if it's piston rings, if um, you have valve issues or something happening inside the cylinder head. Um, it's definitely a, a solid test to perform when doing a, uh, just a general health check period. But especially if you suspect that something's really wrong with your engine. Uh, for example, if you've got a catch can that's filling up and um, your dipstick is blowing out or you open your oil fill cap and it's like really, really puffy blowing out of there. Um, that's, that's a pretty high indicator of uh, worn out compression rings. And um, in which case the, uh, you know, exploding gases are, are pressurizing the crankcase and all that uh, is working its way out everywhere else, but <laughs> where you want it. And uh, one makes a mess, two robs your engine of power. So that's it yeah, with number three, 175. So pretty important while again doing this stuff, you stay consistent in your methods. You know, I try to keep the engine spinning over the same number of times. Um, I try to work as quickly as possible as the engine is going to continue to cool down. But again, ran it up to operating temp. It's not going to, it's not going to lose temp that fast that these rings are going to, going to shrink up on us. Slightly higher, we've got 176. So 160 on that one. Maybe 165, it's kind of like in between. Um, still a very, very good number. Something I would start to con be concerned about is if you have uh, compression loss in just one cylinder, um, you know, is it the piston? Is it something else? Um, it's hard to say. Um, typically though, you'll see um, if it's isolated to one cylinder, um, it'll just be a weird reading there. And it could be, you know, piston damage, something to that effect. The rings themselves are not sealing like they're properly supposed to. Um, but uh, also it could be that, you know, typically if you have an issue like a head gasket um, or something inside the valve train, you would have two adjacent cylinders kind of doing, uh, doing some weird stuff. So um, usually as I roll through and I see numbers that are like super consistent like this one, and then I start to see one that may fall down a little bit, um, my next cylinder, which in this case is number six, um, I'm interested to see if that one is as high as the rest or if it starts to come down. Um, I'm anticipating that it may be similar to number five. Um, and that way, um, kind of goes to the history of the RB26, um, where people talk about the rear part of this collector um, creating kind of a lean mixture towards the back two cylinders. Um, you know, again, I'd seen it in my personal R32 GTR when I was just rocking the, uh, the N1 engine. Um, I had uh, basically melted the ring lens on number six. Every other cylinder was solid. Number six was the only one that was hurt. And, um, you know, no real telling you know what caused it unless it was just a lean condition but um, again i wasn't running individual egts or i didn't have a method to tune individual cylinders back at that time so um, basically just you know letting it rip with the wideband o2 and uh, after some some hard passes on the on the drag strip you know number six decided to let go and the the car still ran great but uh it had some some funky blow by issues, kind of like what I was talking about. And when I pulled it apart, that was the culprit. All 
All right, and this one jumped all the way back up to 175. So again, looking wonderful. So, I mean, again, that's the process for doing the compression test on this. I kind of threw some extra little knowledge bombs in there. Uh, I am very, very pleased with the compression numbers that we saw here. Um, you know, if you can't really see that, doesn't really matter, that's just my notes. Um, but again, 175 all the way down till number five where uh, I was reading about 165. Um, you know, I could maybe say it was a little higher, 170. Um, but again, like it was closer to 165 than 170. I'm not gonna round up in this case. Um, again, nothing to be concerned about. Uh, so now I'm gonna put everything back together in the reverse order that I took it apart. I'm gonna save you the, the painstaking process of watching me do that. Um, but important that as you're putting stuff back together, again, make sure that you're connecting everything under that ornament plate, uh, all of your coil packs and such. If there's any grounds and such that are hiding in the back, make sure you're getting those. Um, obviously, if the car ran great before and then you did this and now all of a sudden it doesn't run so well, chances are it's something that you did. So pay attention hook up any grounds, reconnect any leads that you disconnected. Um, and then in my case, I have the cast disconnected, but I also have the injectors disabled inside the Haltech software. So I need to remember that when, before it comes time to fire this thing up, I go back into the Haltech software and re-enable those injectors, apply that to the settings, reboot the ECU, and we're ready to fire it up and take it to the next step. Hey guys, so hope you enjoyed these tech tips. You know, we had a fun time doing the compression test on this GTR. Everything came out super great. So if you like this video and you want to see more like it, stay tuned for more driver tech tips. I'm Josh with Driver Motorsports. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.